Hello and welcome on today's video. Please like and subscribe. Ferrari 250LM racing prototype from 1965. This type won Le Mans in 65 and it was the last Ferrari to win Le Mans overall until 2023. Ferrari 250LM is a further development of Ferrari 250P from the early 1960s which was the first mid-engine Ferrari. This layout improved handling compared to that time conventional front-mounted engine, including rest of Ferrari 250s. That Ferrari 250LM is mid-engine is obvious from the layout of the car. Ferrari 250LM bonnet is quite short, cockpit is also relatively put forward. Windscreen is more aerodynamical than previous Ferrari 250s and it is the same like 2 series Ferrari 250 GTO. Engine placement in front of the rear axle you can recognize also according to air intakes behind a canopy. All rear part of the chassis was possible to open. It was a similar solution like later Ferrari F40s or F50s. When you are next to the car, you notice that the car is relatively compact compared to current ones. This is short, obviously it is low and it is relatively narrow too. Output of 3.3 liter V12 engine is 320 horsepower which allows a car with a curb weight uh, about 1000 kilos to achieve top speed 290 km per hour on Mulsanne straight. Actually, displacement of one cylinder is not 250 but 275 cc, so sometimes car is called Ferrari 275 LM, however official name is Ferrari 250 LM. Allegedly chosen by Enzo Ferrari uh, himself in order to persuade FIA that uh, this car is only a follow-on of Ferrari 250 short wheelbase and Ferrari 250 GTO, which were allowed to race uh, in a GT category. In contrast to Ferrari 250 GTO, which FIA approved as far the development of uh, Ferrari 250 short wheelbase, FIA found Ferrari 250M too different and so the car was forced to race in a prototype category. Cars equipped with non-ventilated disc brakes behind still wired Borani wheels. Brakes are really massive, having definitely over 300 mm. They have to withstand the heat of deceleration at the end of Mulsanne straight from 290 km per hour and it had to do it for 24 hours in which a winning car made 348 laps. Interesting details. Signed indicator, headlight, air intake for brakes and white but low air intake. Small lights are not covered by aerodynamical covers. In 1965, winning car was driven by Johan Rindt, future Formula 1 world champion from 1970. He was the only post-mortal Formula 1 world champion, as he was tra tragically killed in a crash during the practice on Italian Grand Prix on 5th September 1970. Second driver was another F1 pilot, Marston Gregory. According to the memoirs, in 1965 Le Mans was not an easy for winning car number 21. As having technical difficulties in early stage of the race, they decided to race flat out since then. Interesting is that it was not a Ferrari factory team car, but it belongs to private NART team. Due to various technical difficulties, uh, including uh, cracking uh, immature ventilated disc brakes on newer factory Ferraris and mechanical failures of Ford GT40s, 
it was the Ferrari's 250 LMs finishing uh, on first and second place, despite at that time the car was no longer peak of the evolution. Second place was achieved by yellow car number 26, which was racing on French Michelin tires, while winning red car number 21 was racing on Dunlop tires. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Goodbye.